What's happening guys? Silent Mike, back on the couch. Haven't been on this couch in a while. Appreciate you guys. If you're new, subscribe. Give this thing a thumbs up. Today I wanna to talk about powerlifting. The growth of powerlifting over the last couple years, I'd say three to five years has been absolutely insane, uh, especially over here in the IPF and the USAPL, the drug tested side, but there's also uh, non-drug tested powerlifting, the USPA, um, the UPA, the SPF, very popular as well. They're both growing. Uh, and I guess today, because I've been watching the USAPL Raw Nationals, uh, USA Powerlifting, drug tested, um, and some of the insane numbers I've been seeing lifted in all weight classes, uh, guys and girls, it's been crazy impressive. And I want to just kind of talk and compare and contrast some of the records, I guess, in the non-drug uh, tested compared to the tested. Uh, give you some of my opinions, give you some of the facts. Now, I just got these numbers, these records off of Powerlifting Watch, which is a popular website that has some um, information on powerlifting, different gyms, different meets, things like that. Uh, pretty good resource. It also has records, but I don't know how recently updated they are. Um, but for the, the, the case of this video and for general discussion, it'll do. So if, if I mention a name and a number uh, that's not the record right now, um, don't blow me up. I'm going off them uh, and I am aware that records are broken uh, fairly often now that people are getting stronger. Moving on to the total. Um, in the 123 class, the best drug tested total is 1306, while the best non-drug tested is 1339. The best 165 drug tested is 1609 and the best non-drug tested at 165 is 1669. So uh, what I'm seeing here is because of the IPF and the USAPL is put into 231 pounds, technically it's a 105 kilo, and in the non-drug test of federations it's typically 220 or 242, they're putting the 231 guys up with the 242, which is fine, it's splitting the difference, but let's go there. So we're at the 242 uh, pound weight class, which is uh, my homie Bryce Lewis, and he's totaled 1918. 2016, which I believe he just crushed this last weekend. Uh, not sure his total, but he beat that. Um, and the 242 um, non-drug tested is Larry Williams with a 2171. So at the 275 pound weight class, again in the IPF, it's a 264 and non-drug tested, it's 275. We have Stan Efferding with a uh, 2226 total in 2011. And right now we have Dennis Cornelius at the 264 with a 2175. Ray Williams is the uh, biggest total ever in super heavyweights with sleeves, drug tested and non, with 24.36. Going to the 181 class, so far we have, which may again not be accurate, it is Brett Gibbs with 17.66 in the IPF drug tested 2016. And we have Malik Durstein with 19.01 USPA non-drug tested 2016. Now I bring up all these numbers and I wanted to just give you some examples of the current records in the drug tested and non-drug tested to bring up the point not to talk about steroids and not to talk about performance enhancing drugs and how much they may or may not help you, but just to talk about how far the sport has grown and how fast it's still growing. Um, a lot of these records besides some of the most insane ones um, are with, done within the last three or four years. And I feel like over this last weekend, I saw more and more 700 pound deadlifts by guys that weigh under 200 pounds, uh, more and more 500 pound benches by guys that weigh 200 and more, all in this drug tested category. Uh, and a lot of these numbers, I feel like over the last 20 years, 30 years, have gotten closer and closer together, the non-drug tested numbers and the drug tested numbers. Now there's many different things we can point to and there's many different things that you can say and you're more than welcome to formulate your own opinion and leave it in the comments below. Let's not fight, let's not be brash, let's not throw daggers at anybody. It's not about that. It's For me, it's just about analyzing how crazy uh, some of this training and, and, and athletes have become. And you know, there's a couple things in my opinion that do help um, bring these numbers closer together uh, as well as just bring all these numbers up and you know number one is just that it's more popular in our genetic pool the amount of good athletes we're getting into powerlifting is going up some of the ladies numbers are going through the roof I can't name how many girls six years ago pulled over 300 pounds you know it was just a handful and now
now there's girls smashing on 400, 450, 500 pound deadlifts in the drug tested category in almost every weight class. It's absolutely insane. And that's just because more strong people are finding out about the sport of powerlifting, hopefully because of this channel, hopefully because of Instagram, hopefully because of all my awesome friends that also put up content on the internet and that they're finding the right way to train. So our genetic pool is going up. The more people you get involved, the higher it goes, right? That's why we have the most genetic freaks in, in football and basketball professionally. Uh, one, because there's money and there's exposure and there's a lifestyle. Um, so at a young age, the best athletes are funneled to the top. And that's starting to happen on a smaller scale here in powerlifting. Um, number two, I would say is just the, the general information out there is uh, of better quality. You know, even when I started doing YouTube, not my own channel, which is only, you know, two and a half years old, but on other channels, which I've been on for about five, six years, um, there was less channels putting out real information in my opinion. There's a lot of people throwing around buzzwords and bogus words and, and five easy tips to get a six pack and get jacked and get veiny. At least now some of the channels have the same idea and the same information, whether it's experience-based or science-based or a combination of both that will actually are good tips to help you lead to get a stronger, uh, more aesthetic body. Along with that same nature of the general sport growing because of the internet, because of Instagram, because of all these popular people, um, programming in general, I feel has all been elevated. So people are more aware of their programming, uh, whether they're following a dope program, whether they have a good coach, or they're programming for themselves, they have a better plan to get somewhere. And of course, if you have a plan, you're gonna get somewhere faster. Uh, if, you know, That's why people use GPS, that's why pay, people go to school. That's You need a game plan if you wanna get somewhere. And more and more people are understanding that and they're building better plans, building better plans, and they're staying in the game longer. Uh, you know, If you power lift for a year, you can get stronger for sure. But if you start power lifting for five, six, seven, 10, 15 years, you're gonna be your strongest. You know, My homie Bryce Lewis has been doing this for a long time. He's done, bodybuilding and things when he was younger but now he's been strictly powerlifting uh, around the same time as I have eight maybe even nine years and you see his numbers absolutely going through the roof he decided to stay at a little heavier body weight and he's just been as consistent as can be on his training and his programming and now he's you know knocking on the door of becoming an IPF champion in 2018 there's my prediction. Now obviously drugs and things are playing a role in all strength sports. It's part of the fitness industry. It's part of the Olympics. I love the movie I care, uh, Icarus. I talked about it before and it's part of professional sports. Um, and not to say that drugs do not help you but looking at some of these numbers, myself analyzing them is one thing that uh, I think is apparent to most people is that the difference between a natural pro bodybuilder and a pro bodybuilder is absolutely insane. Some of the pro IFBB guys are stepping on stage upwards of 250 pounds at you know under four percent body fat or a natural pro bodybuilder if they're stepping on stage at sub four percent body fat they're typically 150 160 170 pounds so that's you know just logic is telling me that performance enhancing drugs or steroids will help you put on more mass uh, and that's a huge discrepancy. We're almost talking about 100 pounds of lean body tissue. Where in the strength world, we're not seeing quite the discrepancy. So I'm not saying that steroids do or do not help more for strength or, or uh, putting on mass, although I do think that they help putting on mass. Now, I'm no steroid guru. I don't know that much about it. I've been around it just as much as many people that have been in this industry. I've never used any of it. Um, but the numbers that are coming together closer and closer and closer in the non-drug tested and drug tested powerlifting federations. Um, I think show a little bit that the USAPL and the IPF um, genetic pool may also be bigger than the, the people that decide to use performance enhancing drugs or that decide to compete in the performance enhancing drug competition. And again, all of these um, one way or the other are not saying that because you compete in a non-drug tested federation that you use performance enhancing drugs. And it's also to say that if you're in a drug tested federation that you're not using performance enhancing drugs. I'm sure there's crossover in both. There's a lot of critique in the IPF and the USAPL about how stringent their drug testing is. I, I don't know firsthand. I know they do a urine test at competitions and they do some out of uh, competition testing. It's not as same as uh, the Olympic level or even uh, USAW, USA weightlifting. It, it might not be as stringent. But again, there's people in the in the uh, Olympics, if you watch the movie Icarus, and there's people in the NBA, NFL that are also using performance enhancing drugs, being very stringent on their testing and still getting by the system somehow. And that's also not to say that on the other end, because there's other factors and rules involved, like a deadlift bar or a monolift, where people that choose uh, to not use performance enhancing drugs compete in the non-drug tested federation, which I have many a time. Uh, I really like pulling with the deadlift bar. It feels good in my hands. It feels good on my back. And in the most popular drug test 
just a federation. They don't use one. They use a stiff bar. So then often I've chosen to compete in a non-drug tested uh, federation, although I don't use any performance enhancing drugs. So there's way too many complicated factors. There is no answer to this video. I'm glad you stuck around and listened to me ramble. It's just some thoughts have been popping in my head. After listening and watching uh, the awesome lifters of the USAPL all weekend, Con congratulations to all those people that uh, decided to commit to a meet, that decided to commit to nationals, that hit p big PRs and had fun with their friends. It's an awesome community we're building on all sides. That's the main thing I want to point out is that because there's barbells involved, because we're all in it to get better and to do our best and become our best, that there is a weird uh, brotherhood of you know the pain of a really hard deadlift workout and you know the pain of squatting two or three times a week for the last five years so we can all kind of bond and uh, love one another based on our pains appreciate you guys if you like this style of video be sure to give it a thumbs up i'm out of here catching the next one dropping a video every other day appreciate you guys Salam alaikum.